Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be an empties video. I wanted to share my thoughts on everything that I've used up over the last few months. I was working on a lot of these products during the winter time and like winter heading into spring, so I have a lot of like intensely hydrating products. If that's what you typically go for, I'll have a lot of reviews in that category. There are definitely products that I repurchase all the time, but also a few that I don't think are worth the money that I don't plan on picking up again. So I hope today's video is helpful. I think I have like 20 different products. So let's just jump into it and I'll share my thoughts on them. The first thing I want to talk about is a hair mask. I've been using this for the last few months and I love it. I have a few hair masks I love. I typically do repurchase the Briogeo one, like their Kiwi Avocado one, but I ended up repurchasing this one instead of the Briogeo one this time around. So I feel like that says a lot about this because I've been using that Briogeo one for years. It's still a really good option, but I think this one is extra nourishing. So this is from Coco and Eve. It's the Like a Virgin Super Nourishing Coconut and Fig Hair Mask. I originally tried the hair oil from this brand and I loved it. Like I could see an instant difference. I'm pretty sure I used that and I told you guys like my hair felt brand new. So I decided to try their hair mask and I felt like it was the same experience, especially when my hair was long and dry and damaged. It just infused it with like this deep moisture that I didn't get from other products. So I'm telling you if you have really dry damaged hair, especially if it's like the winter time and you use a lot of heat on your hair, this product is so nice. I did end up repurchasing it. I think I already said that. It was on sale when I grabbed it. That was like a while ago. I wasn't even done with this. I think it was just on sale during Ulta's Gorgeous Hair event too. But I'm sold on this brand. I want to see what else they offer because the two products I've tried are so good. Like I would repurchase them over and over. I don't plan on repurchasing this Briogeo shampoo or conditioner. This is the Superfoods Mango and Cherry Balancing Formula. So I've tried a couple of their shampoos and conditioners. I've tried the ones that come with yellow caps, the ones that come with green caps. I can't remember the exact names or claims, but like every time I try their shampoo and conditioner, I'm left feeling a little bit underwhelmed. Not their deep conditioners. I always love those. And I also love like their charcoal deep detox scalp scrub. That is so good. I feel like they do that product and their deep conditioners so, so well, but their shampoos and conditioners are always leaving me feeling underwhelmed and they're expensive. And I feel like I fly through the formulas so fast. I was using these when I had longer hair, but they didn't last me very long at all. And I just feel like for that price point, I'm not noticing a big difference in the way my hair looks or feels. And it's not like a luxurious experience. It just, you know, I'll stick with my drugstore shampoos and conditioners. Right now I'm actually using a Garnier shampoo and conditioner. I love Garnier's shampoos and conditioners because they always leave my hair feeling super silky, really smooth. I'm using like their color protect line. I don't know the official name. I'll put a picture on the screen, but I dyed my hair at the beginning of May. And normally I don't use a shampoo and conditioner meant for color treated hair, but I thought I would give it a shot to see if it extended my hair color. It didn't. I feel like any hair color that has like red tones in it just fades so fast but the actual formula leaves my hair feeling really smooth and I do think it gives my hair like an extra voluminous boost. Although when I cut it, I feel like that kind of happened naturally too. So anyway, I don't really have a formula that I'm like super sold on at the moment. I still go back to like my function of beauty formula, but if you have any recommendations, let me know. I did finish up a foundation. This is from Fenty. There's maybe like a tiny bit left in here, but I did notice like once I got to the end, the formula was changing a little bit because I had repurchased it. And when I got my new bottle, the textures were different. Like this was a little bit thicker. So I thought it was time to count this one as finished. And I'm glad I made my way through it because this was sitting in my collection for a little while. And then at the beginning of 2020, I was just kind of rotating through all my foundations and after wearing this one a few times I fell back in love with it. This is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. I have the shade 150. So on days where I have a very long day, like when I'm running errands or I'm working outside the home and I only have the chance to like stop at home really quickly and then I have to go back out, this is the foundation I'll wear if I don't want to like sit down and touch up my makeup. If I want my makeup to look good all day long because this will last on the skin. At the end of 12 hours, like it's still in place. I might look a little bit oily. Other makeup products might have faded, but typically my foundation is still there, especially if I pair it with something like the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, which really locks my makeup into place. So I do love this product. It's not, you know, my ideal foundation that I wear every single day, but it definitely serves a purpose in my collection. So I did end up repurchasing it, I think during the last Sephora VIB sale. A few mascaras. So this is the Flower Beauty Dream Warrior Volumizing Mascara. I only tried this for the first time a few months ago, 
but I actually used up like an entire tube of it. I feel like I was really scraping the sides of this because I wore it so often. And it's the type of formula that you can really build up to look super dramatic. This gives your lashes such a pretty like soft, fluttery, lifted look. It does a great job separating, but like I said, you can also get a ton of drama if that's what you want as well. I think I have a video on my channel where I tried this for the first time and I was just so pleasantly surprised by it. I feel like you typically know when it comes to a mascara if you like it, like the first time you tried it. As long as it doesn't flake or smudge, my initial application is usually a pretty good indication as to whether or not I'll like it the next time I used it. So that was definitely the case with this one. My first impression still stands. It is such a good formula. I did repurchase this one. I actually have it in my everyday makeup drawer right now. This one is the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. So I think I used this one up a few months ago because this has not been on rotation for a little while and I miss it. This is one of my favorite mascaras of all time. It gives your lashes the most beautiful, voluminous, lengthened look. If you want dramatic lashes, this one's a really good option. I want to repurchase this, but I do have a few other open mascaras. So eventually I'll get back to it, but I still think this is one of my top favorites of all time. Like right now, my top favorites would be this one, the Tower 28 Make Waves, and then also the Tarte Tartlet Tubing. But even as I say that, there are like five other mascaras that come to mind that I love. But right now, those are probably like my top three. I did use up two different products from Peach and Lily. I think I actually had a Peach and Lily moisturizer in my last empties video. But this time around, I finished up the Ginger Melt Oil Cleanser. I love this product. I haven't used an oil or a cleansing oil in a really long time. I was kind of on like a cleansing balm kick and then I was using micellar water, but I feel like cleansing oil is so nice because it kind of falls between the two. It honestly just melts all of your makeup away. I will say if I'm wearing a very hard to remove mascara, not even a waterproof mascara, something that just takes a little bit of extra effort, usually I would have to go in with like a tiny bit of micellar water to get it all off. So if you don't wear a mascara that comes off pretty easily, this probably won't take it off every single time. But I think it did such a great job removing all of my base makeup and it's so gentle, so incredibly hydrating. Like during the winter, my skin was really dry and I was just dealing with like a lot of texture, a lot of irritation. It was so sensitive. It's still sensitive. So something like this really comes in handy because it is gentle, but it does a great job of actually removing all of your foundation, all of your blush, bronzer before you go in and use a cleanser. I haven't repurchased this yet because I feel like my skin has changed a little bit. Now it is very, very oily again. The weather has changed and we're heading into summer. So probably once fall rolls back around, I will grab this again, just not right now. That being said, I don't plan on repurchasing this cleanser from Peach and Lily, the Power Calm Hydrating Gel Cleanser. I was just pretty underwhelmed by it, to be honest with you. I do love a good gel cleanser, but usually the gel cleansers I reach for have more like acne fighting ingredients in them. And I don't know that a gel cleanser, in my opinion, is the most ideal if you're looking for a super hydrating formula. I feel like gel cleansers are really good if you have oily skin or acne prone skin because they're so lightweight, but this one claims to be really refreshing, really hydrating, and I just didn't find that to be the case. It rinsed off so quickly and it didn't leave my skin feeling hydrated at all. So I would recommend skipping over this one and trying a different Peach and Lily product like their oil cleanser. I don't know if they have any other cleansers because this is the only one I tried but overall it was pretty underwhelming. Around the same time I was using this cleanser from Osea, this is their Ocean Cleanser, which I do really love. This one is very, very creamy, very hydrating. So I felt like maybe because I was using this one kind of around the same time, it just didn't compare. Typically I would use this at night and then this in the morning, but this one was so much better because it was very creamy, very, very hydrating. A little bit went such a long way. Like I would just use like one or two pumps and then add a little water, rub it together, and I felt like it spread all over my face. And even once I rinsed it off, I could tell that my skin was instantly moisturized. I don't plan on repurchasing this right now because right now I'm using cleansers that are more geared toward like acne prone skin because my skin has been breaking out a little bit but during the fall and the winter I will go back to this. I did finish up this moisturizer from Osea. Full disclosure I did do a sponsored video with them back in the beginning of the year to talk about this product but this is not sponsored. I never had to mention the product again if I didn't want to but I truly did love it. I started using it back in December and then I finished it up I want to say maybe like around March no, maybe it was like the beginning of April. It lasted me almost like four full months. It lasted such a long time, like three and a half, four months, because this is like the only thing I use during the winter time. My skin was so dry 
which was kind of new for me. It was kind of like dry leading combo. It really depended on the day and the weather. Now it's very oily again. It just can't make its mind up. But during the winter when I was dealing with dryness, this was perfect. It's so rich, so luxurious, and you really just needed the smallest amount, especially when I use this at night. I was using it in the morning of the night for a couple months and then I did switch to mainly just using it at night. So I guess maybe it would last you like typically like three months if you used it every morning and every night, but it is intense. It's so luxurious feeling. If you have dry skin, this is definitely something I recommend. Even combo skin because it just leaves your skin truly hydrated. Like it really transforms the texture of my skin. I almost wonder if I should be using it now because I'm, my skin is just struggling. It's it, it can't make up its mind if it's like oily or combo or acne prone, but I feel like maybe it would be a little bit too heavy for me during the summer when my skin is more oily. I thought the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream was like intensely hydrating and super rich and luxurious feeling until I tried the Osea one and this one takes it to the next level. But It Cosmetics is a good option if you want something like a few steps down. It's not quite as rich as Osea, but it still does a good job moisturizing the skin. I don't know, I don't really notice any like big transformation with my skin when I use this product. Uh, you guys know I love the It Cosmetics eye cream, which I also used up. This is my favorite eye cream and I've gone through so many of these because it seems to be like the one thing that works around my eye area without drying it out. This moisturizer I think is technically from the same line. I mean they are different products, but I don't know, I'm not, it, it's a good product, but I wouldn't say I'm like blown away by this to the point where I need to run out and repurchase it over and over like I typically do with the eye cream. So I'll skip the moisturizer for now, but I do love the eye cream. Like I said, I, or did I say this already? Maybe I just thought it. I did buy the Osea eye cream because they came out with one. I think it's called like the Advanced Protection Eye Cream, like the same line as this. And that's what I plan on trying after I finish up the one I'm using. I'm currently using a Fenty Beauty eye cream and an e.l.f. eye cream just simultaneously. So once I'm done with those, I'm going to try Osea. And if that one doesn't work, I'll go back to It Cosmetics. But if it does work, I'll let you know if I found a new favorite. It took me forever to get through the NYX Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara. I don't even know how long I had this open. And I feel like this product, it almost works a little bit better once it dries out a little. And I feel like when that's the case, like sometimes you'll just use a product forever because even though it's pretty much dried out or I pretty much used all of it, it was still working for me. But then I repurchased it and the new one was like so fresh. It made my brows look really, really good that I was like, okay, it's time to let this one go. But I love this product. I was using gloss boy brow for a little while and I do still like that but then I went back to the NYX Thick It Stick It. I don't know they're both good I kind of use them interchangeably the reason why I like the NYX one is because I do think it almost looks a little bit more natural like the Glossier one is super wet and again once it dries out it's almost a little bit better but I feel like when I use that my brows look a lot more dramatic so when I'm not wearing a ton of makeup and I just want to define my brows a little bit this is what I'll reach for. I did finish up the Hask Manoi Coconut Dry Shampoo. I do like this one I think this one is a little bit more of a gentle formula if your scalp gets super easily irritated, then I do recommend this one. I've tried some intense dry shampoos and I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I just don't need that. Like if it's only the second day, like if I washed my hair yesterday and I'm using dry shampoo today, I don't need anything over the top, like intensely strong. So when that's the case, I'll reach for this one. It definitely has a strong scent, like a really intense coconut scent, but I love it. I feel like it's a really fun scent for spring and summer. I wouldn't use this on like day three hair. I don't typically go three days. I, I do really like to wash my hair like every other day these days, but sometimes things happen and I just don't have a lot of time and I have to like throw it up in a bun. So if that's the case, I might reach for like a more intense dry shampoo than this one, but I think this one is great if you don't have like an extremely oily scalp. I also used up the Living Proof Full Dry Volume and Texture Spray. This, for some reason, the name always throws me off and I always think it's a dry shampoo when I grab it, even though I use it like all the time. It is not. It's supposed to give you like instant and long lasting volume and texture. I love this product even more so now that my hair is shorter. When my hair was longer, I would spray this in, especially because it would really weigh itself down at the roots. And I felt like it gave me like a little bit of a boost. But now that my hair is shorter, if I like spray this in and just kind of like pull my hair out like this, I feel like it gives me a really thick voluminous look, but also more of a textured look. It does a really good job. It's expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth it. If you have a good drugstore texture spray alternative, 
please let me know because that is something I have not discovered yet. I haven't always used a texture spray in my routine, but I do love this one. So I think I currently have one of these in my bathroom right now, but after that, I would love to try something different. I did finish up two more mascaras. I used these up a while ago, but the e.l.f. Lash and Roll is a really good option if you want like a lifted, separated look. If you want more of a natural look, this one is nice. It doesn't get too dramatic. It doesn't end up looking clumpy or too voluminous, which is sometimes a look that I do really like. But on days where I was wearing like minimal makeup or I just wanted like a quick swipe of mascara, this is what I would reach for. I don't plan on repurchasing it right now because I do have a ton of other mascaras open, but eventually I would grab this again. And then the Item Beauty Lash Snack. I think this was actually discontinued, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, the last time I tried this, it wasn't the same as the first few times I tried it. Like I've repurchased this mascara a few times over the past year or two, and I really enjoyed it, but I felt like this past time it was kind of clumpy. So I don't know if mine was just kind of old. I know the brand, I don't think the brand is available any longer. It's at least not sold at Sephora, so this might have been like older stock, but after this last time of trying it, I wouldn't repurchase it. It's weird because I did really love this the first few times. It just, it didn't work as well. It ended up looking really clumpy on my lashes, which is weird because the reason why I loved it is because it did such a great job like lengthening and separating. Okay, I do have a few more skincare products. This is the Tula Bright Start Vitamin C Antioxidant Brightening Moisturizer. I love this product. I think I actually had this open for a long time because I'm pretty sure I started using it last spring and then I was using other products and then I didn't get back to this one until a few months ago, but I think the texture of this product is so perfect if you have oily skin. It's moisturizing without being over the top. Like it's definitely not as intense as Osea or It Cosmetics. It has like a very creamy texture to it and I feel like it just spreads so nicely on my skin and it leaves my skin feeling moisturized and glowy and smooth and I love it. So I would definitely repurchase this. I don't know that I need like a vitamin C mixed into my moisturizer because I do typically use like a separate vitamin C serum. So I wouldn't purchase this just for those benefits if you were thinking about it unless you don't use a vitamin C serum. I don't know how much vitamin C is actually in here if it really is giving you like any sort of effect, but I do think the actual moisturizer leaves my skin looking really glowy and smooth and even as I use it. So I do love this. I would go back to it. I kind of forgot about it because at any given point in time, I just have a lot of skincare products open because I'm always testing different things. So I do make a big effort to use things up fully, but sometimes I'll like stop using something and go back to something different. This is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Hydrogel Moisturizer. Again, I think this has been open since maybe like the summertime. I don't know if they still make this because I was at the drugstore the other day. I think it was Rite Aid and I was looking for this in stores and I actually picked up another moisturizer from the line, but it wasn't called Hydrogel. It was called, I think it was just called like the Holy Hydration Moisturizer, but it's not the one that comes in like the tub or like the twist the jar. It actually came in like a squeeze tube type packaging, but it had a different name than this and the original one. I'll find it and put a picture of it on the screen. That feels really nice. I don't know. Maybe it is the same as like the Holy Hydration Face Cream. It's just in different packaging. I'm actually using the one that has SPF in it right now, and I like to use that as my moisturizer and then go in with SPF on top. I feel like a little added boost is always nice. I won't use it as like my sole SPF for the day. Anyway, that's the one that I'm currently using. So I think that's it. Okay. One last product. I feel like I've been sitting here forever and just chatting with you guys. This is the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water, the waterproof version. The waterproof version is the one that I've been using a lot lately. I did buy the one that has hyaluronic acid in it, and I think that does a really good job of leaving my skin feeling refreshed and smooth and hydrated. But the waterproof version removes all of my eye makeup, like waterproof eye makeup, but also mascara that's just difficult to remove. Whereas like this cleanser from Peach and Lily didn't always do that for me. This always does, like it never lets me down. It has like an oily texture to it, so it's not like the most comfortable on the skin, but because I use this and then I go in with a cleanser afterwards, it's fine and it's really, really effective. Okay, that is everything I wanted to share with you in today's video. I have like my empties spread out everywhere. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it was helpful in case you were considering any of these products. I know empties videos aren't necessarily the most popular, but I still like to do them because I like to follow up and share reviews on products I've used up fully. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you very soon with a new one. Bye.